Hi guys, my name is Chad Trofgerben. I am the founder and content creator for IncredibleTutorials.com. I have teamed up with Smith Micro to bring you these brand new Anime Studio 9 tutorials. So let's get started. In Anime Studio Debut, you have the ability to adjust the dimensions, frame rate, and more in the Project Settings window. To access this window, simply go to File, Project Settings, or you can use Control Shift P or Command Shift P if you're on a Mac. Now, with this window, you have the ability to select preset dimensions that were built into Anime Studio. By clicking this box, you have access to NTSC, PAL, VGA, web, web widescreen, YouTube, and iPhone. So let's say, for instance, you created an animation that's catered more to iPhone users. You may want to select that iPhone preset so that your dimensions match that of the iPhone, so that it's optimized for the iPhone. However, you have the ability to create a custom preset. Just keep in mind that when you enter in your dimensions, there is a limit. So for instance, if I put in 1000 for width and 1000 for height and click OK, Anime Studio will snap the dimensions back to the highest it can go. So in this case for the width, it's 788. If you want to keep things proportionate when resizing your dimensions, be sure to keep constrained proportions on. As far as frame rate, the higher the frame rate, the smoother something will look. Anime Studio typically defaults to 24 frames per second. Start and end frame dictate how long you want your project file to play out. Just keep in mind that Anime Studio Debut comes with a 3000 frame limit. So if you try to breach this and you click OK, you'll see that the frame limit snaps back to 3000. Finally, if you're positioning your layers further and closer to the camera, you may want to select the sort layers by depth. Essentially, you'll be able to assemble your layers and dictate what is in front of what based on the z-axis in your move layer properties. And this works as opposed to adjusting the layers manually in your layers properties box. Sort by true distance is used more for creating 3D objects, and it goes by the origin rather than the camera distance of the object. This is usually left unchecked. Finally, extra SWF frame adds an extra frame to the end of the video. And if you want, if you have something set up that you really like as far as the dimensions are concerned, you can save as defaults. This will save all of your current settings as a default so that the next time you make a new project file, it will keep these settings so you don't have to readjust. And finally, if you don't like what you have created as far as your defaults, you can click Restore Defaults and that will bring everything back to how it was when Anime Studio was first installed. And of course, as you can see, if you click on the background color, color, you can adjust the color using the color switcher. And that is all there is to it. Adjusting your project settings can be really important, especially if you're trying to cater to a certain audience. And it's always best to adjust your project settings first before animating, so keep that in mind. That wraps up this lesson. If you would like more information, please visit the official Anime Studio website. Thanks for watching, guys. I have more tutorials coming, so I'll see you then.